welcome Sister Evelyn Shea. Young people that need to know what the 
the anointing power of the Holy Ghost oh, in it. And it will never get it done with the dead, dry form of religion. It's the power and the moving of the Holy Ghost. Because God has a now move oh, yeah. for this generation. Yes. And you know what worked in yesterday years may not work today. Oh, and what works in one church may not work for oh, this one. Jesus. And God is saying to this church, Hallelujah. forget oh. the former things and don't dwell on the past. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Because God wants to give you an experience, yes. a new, fresh experience yes. with Him. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and look at verse 19. Oh, did I give you this? No. <laughs> Sorry. I'm reading in Isaiah 43, and verse 18, I just read it, forget the former things. And verse 19, it says this. See? See? All right. I am doing a new thing. Yes. Oh. Yes. But I like the old one. I, I know. Right. You know, it's sometimes we Pentecostal. Now, some of you may not understand. Maybe some of you didn't even know I was Pentecostal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> and sometimes we Pentecostals, you know, in, in, we, we just get so caught up in, like Pastor uh, Rick or Brother Rick spoke last night about uh, the form of religion and the rules and the regulations and you can't do this. Honey, I grew up in a church that if I cut my hair, it was a sin. Look out the Wow, my Lord. Oh, honey. <laughs> I, after I had my hair cut, I went to a fellowship meeting. Yeah. That's where all the churches get together. And honey, some of those preachers wouldn't even speak to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now that God has put us in the ministry Jeez. that we're now in, they sure enough won't speak. <laughs> Oh, we're doing great. Wouldn't <laughs> trade it for anything. But let's read on. See, I am doing a new thing. I love this. Now. Now. Say now. 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 It springs up. Yes. yes. In other words, now it's happening. Now it's taking place. Good. And then he said, he finished it by saying this, do you not perceive or know it? Know it. Some people can't even know recognize it because they are so living in their past oh. former experiences, they can't even recognize that now God said, I am doing a new thing. Don't right. you perceive it? Don't Thank you Lord. know it? Don't you recognize right. it? Right. And some people Brother Sin, yeah. they can't recognize it because it's different than what they're used to. Uh, yeah, Amen. sure, sure. Yeah. And, and what is God asking of this body? What is he asking? Jesus. To let him be the focus. Amen, amen. And pastor, if God will be the focus, oh, Jesus.
They need God to do something for them. And, and, and if there's no place for the Holy Spirit to move and to touch their hearts, they'll go away the same way that they came in. And let me tell you, I am tired of hearing about people committing suicide because somebody told them that God doesn't love them. All right. Somebody is going to have blood dripping from their head when they stand before God. My, 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 my. Think about it. I'm tired of hearing people of being told that God doesn't love you. That that you, you, you and they say, well, I might as well if God, you know, I've, yeah. had, I've had people to tell me. Sure. We were in Atlanta, Georgia Jeez. last year. And I was preaching in ministry about the love of God that whosoever will, let them come. Whosoever will, let them come. That means everybody. everybody. There isn't one body over here and another body over here. But it's one body and Christ is the head of the body. And I ministered this one Sunday morning. And then I invited people to come up for prayer. And this young man came and stood in front of me. He said, Sister Edwin, I came to hear you preach today. And I made up my mind that I was going to go home and commit suicide. He said, my daddy is a preacher of a certain church. And he said, I've been told all of my life that God doesn't love me. That God does not want me. And he said, I made up my mind today. I had heard it for the last time yeah. that I was going to come and hear you preach. And I was going to go home and commit suicide. I am tired of hearing stories like that where people are taking their lives because they don't think that God loves them. And that is nothing but a lie of the devil. church, they don't want them. And he said, these people are not going to come through the church. Because if they came through the mainline church, they would be killed and cast out. But God is drawing these people. And I thought, my Lord, he's got a revelation of something. I just got to start a shout. Hallelujah. Because that's the truth. God is drawing men and women in mm. from all walks of life. Oh, you know, we like to say, straight church, gay church, huh? no such thing, church is church. Right. 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 Jesus. 
Nose and this. And then when we read down into, when we read in Acts, the second chapter. And I want you to notice the sixth verse. It says this. Now, when this was noised abroad, what was noised abroad? The Holy Ghost out. And what happened when the multitudes about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, it said the multitudes came together. They came together because they heard that something was happening. Something had happened. And I want you to know when we allow the moving of the Spirit and the power of the Holy Ghost to move in our churches, the multitudes will come. Those that are hungry will come. Oh, that's right. Hallelujah. That's right. They'll come. Yes. And they want to know where is a place that I can go and worship God without fear. Yes. That somebody, you know, I received an email one time from a mother that from uh, uh, Canada, Vancouver, BC, and she was telling me about her and he was raised in this church and in one Sunday as they were worshiping God this young man he had his hands up he was worshiping God and somebody came to him and tapped him on the shoulder and said you have no right to do that well, he was crushed. His mother was crushed. He was raised in that church. Well, he just, he got down on his knees and he started praying. <clears throat> and then here comes the usher. One on one side, one on the other. And they literally picked him up and threw him out. And the mother said, pray for my son. Yes. Oh, yeah. This was another young man that was about ready to take his life. Let's rescue the perish. Amen. Amen. Let's call upon the name Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. Let's believe God for a now move of God that will stir to the very uttermost beings of our soul. And this, I believe, what God has called this church to do. God has <laughs> called you to be the pastor of now. wonderful pastors and they all have their work that God gave them to do but God said I have chosen you Amen. That's right. for a now and now for people can come that have heavy loads and carry heavy burdens and they can
one I think does. Like I said, I, I, I've been raised in the room of God. I know when it is and I know when it ain't. All right. You know what I'm saying? You know when yeah. it is, you know when it is. And I was sitting there and I'm looking around and the Lord said, if you'll stop looking with your natural eyes, I will show you yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Well, I had to close my eyes because if I open my eyes, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ruin it. Because you see, God has a plan. And we don't always know what the plan is. But you know what our job is to do? Follow. Follow. Obey. Follow me. Regardless, oh, I tell you, I know we can help this and get kind of, you know, I mean, loud. You know. You know, I said, God, if you're in it, that's where I want to be. That's where we want to be. And if you're not, you got to show me because I don't want to be in the, in the middle of anything you're not going to have. When you're in it, that's where I want to be. 
just a shouting and a hollering. And I used to have hair to shout down, but the dog didn't go. <laughs> oh, I know I, when I got the shortcut, I went to this young man. And, uh, this, uh, uh, and I, I've never had him, I've never, had never been to a salon before. And he, and, uh, he said, I know what you mean. <laughs> and he said to me, I know what you need, trust me. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. So my Lord, I looked down at the floor. There was all this hair. I'm going, oh, honey, I was so scared. <laughs> and I said, I can't have that short hair like this. I'm a preacher. <laughs> oh, he just said preachers need to look classy too. So we just <laughs> have <that. laughs> Yeah. 